I'm uh, I'm working on episode one of the uh, the plan for weekly stream highlight reels. Um, it's not so easy, you know. Like there's a lot of a lot of crap to edit through. If I do say so myself, if if I if you'll allow me to be my own worst critic for a second. Every single person on this planet believes in trans age. Okay, to start with. Really? Okay, I'm wondering where he's going with this one. Okay. So for instance, at 18 years old, you have the right to own property, to go have sex, to go do whatever the fuck you want to do at 18 or 19 in some states. I think in Nebraska it's 19, right? Okay, like right out the gate, this would seem to be like, so there isn't such a thing as trans age. The fact that at 18, that's like the age of consent. That's one of the reasons why I would hope most people don't believe in trans age, but let's see where this is going. In a way, we kind of treat people with severe mental disability as like trans aged down to a younger age. And what, what he just said there, which is basically that trans is when you treat somebody differently from how they actually are, which I don't think is a very good definition of trans, because obviously with, with age, we treat people differently based on their age, and there's a reason why we do that. But we don't we shouldn't be treating people differently based on whether they're men or women because oh you know certainly not to the same extent we treat people differently based on age I, I, and the other thing is of course that this is a very different way of conceiving of trans identity because it's imposed on other people in his example if somebody has like a particular mental health issue um that makes them kind of mentally quite immature i guess we might treat them as being more young than they are that is something we are imposing on those people. If you applied this to trans identity, you would then be saying, okay, man, you seem like a woman, so we're gonna treat you like a woman, and that actually makes you a woman. We kind of do treat people at, 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 as different ages based on like developmental delays or other sort of problems, okay? Kinda do isn't far enough. Like, yes, you can say, well, we do something that's sort of similar to this thing, but the point is the specific objection, like the idea, that people might treat people, treat men more like how they would typically treat a woman. That's not really in contention. The questions are, does that actually make a man a woman? Um, and of course, is this something that men can insist upon? Like, yeah, I mean, to be honest, like even, even my lovely kind of gender critical audience, you might probably at sometimes treat a man the way you would treat a woman. There might be some men who are, let's say, more effeminate and kind of feel less threatening. You might treat them with perhaps more like the way you would treat other women. Does that mean that you then think that that man has become a woman? Does that mean that because you're treating that man that way, regardless of what he thinks he's now become, you know, that's the problem with it. Like, this is the issue. I think one of my favorite things that I like in terms of, because there's so, all of the analogies for debunking trans identity are all fun in their own way. One of my favorite ones is like, why can't a biological female claim to be a trans woman? I feel like that's a fun one because it's like, it, it kind of forces them to acknowledge biological sex, right? Like they have to, and and like that's that's something which I don't see people say so much, but I think it is very funny because it's like, what can they do? Because one, first of all, they've got to acknowledge words have meanings in general because it's like otherwise, oh, why can't I claim to be a trans man? But then second of all, uh, they'd have to recognize that the reason why I can't be a trans man is because I'm a biological male and they'd have to like argue I'm, like that's the thing. So I feel like that's a very funny one. In the world of reality, a, a, a trans person's brain could be sexed differently than their body. You have to recognize that at that point you are disagreeing with how the trans rights movement, insofar as you know, like basically what they're saying, how they define trans identity because they don't define trans identity by the idea that you have to have like you know your brain be a particular way basically defining trans identity um with reference to the idea that your brain is a certain way and because your brain is that way that means that you are in fact trans and whatever that's like step one you're achieving the very modest goal of having some kind of coherent definition of trans identity but you've still got all of your work ahead of you in, term, in terms of arguing that that means that we need to understand these trans identities as valid. Like the reality is male and female brains are different, 
but also there is massive, huge amounts of diversity within males and females. You know, like there are trends and tendencies in terms of male brains tend to be one way and female brains tend to be the other way. But then there's so much within a, you know, biological males that can make their brains different that showing that males who are trans identified tend to have brains that are in often only a few ways similar to uh, the brains of uh, biological females isn't very credible. And, you know, the thing I heard recently, and I watched a, a good video about this from the Paradox Institute. Male to female transsexuals had a more female-like BSTC. And it's often argued that that's, that's where gender identity is, is located within the brain. But for me, there's so many different ways you can explain that. So one that I've done, on, I've spoken a lot about on Twitter, is that if it is involved in depression and anxiety and all these things, we find that trans women, so that's the male to female transsexuals, have such high rates of depression. And we know that this nucleus can change a lot with um, environmental input as well. So, you know, the, the environment could play a big role there. Oh, uh, OK, Indigo says the main brain study was done on trans people who had been on cross sex hormones. A lot of these various studies that have shown these results, I think, will have been done after people have been on estrogen. So it's like, well, is this showing that trans identity comes from these people having brains that are sex in this particular way? Or is it showing that if you pump a biological male full of wrong sex hormones, huge amounts of estrogen far more than a biological male should naturally be producing, that that will have an effect on their brain chemistry. But for a trans person, the argument is that their brain is actually sexed differently the brain is sexed differently than their body, so it's not just that they're identifying as trans. I, I don't, okay, first of all, I, I don't understand why he's saying the argument. Like, that's often not the argument. That's fine. If you don't believe in trans people, you think it's all fake bullshit, that's fine. But at least engage with the argument as it is. That's the argument as it, as it is presented, all right? It's, it's often not, so he's being very disingenuous here. Like, he's, he's acting as if he's gaslighting Ben Shapiro. That's what he's doing. He's gaslighting. Like, poor Ben Shapiro is walking around, going to universities all over the place, and debating people like a real, you know, logic bro. And everywhere he goes, he's hearing that a woman is just somebody who identifies as a woman. If you identify as a woman, that makes you a woman. Anybody can be trans. Also, loads of people are non-binary, blah, 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 blah. He's hearing all of this stuff. And then, and then uh, Destiny comes along and he's all like, oh, I can't believe Ben Shapiro is arguing as if people are saying trans identity is just like something people arbitrarily identify as and the terms man and woman have no meaning at all. Clearly, he should engage with the argument as it is, which is entirely about defining trans identity with reference to this idea of psychological or um, kind of neurological brain sex. Except not anymore, Destiny. The mainstream talking point is that you don't need gender dysphoria to be trans. Whoever says that is a f***ing retard, ignore them. Who cares? <gasps> Philosophy tube. Called out. Oh, no. Ah, oh, terrible. You can't change age or height or race, but you can sex. They just don't respect women, obviously, that you can is being presented sarcastically. That they're saying stuff about women that they wouldn't say about any other group. It's like, I, you, you'd think they'd realize that this is a, an exception that they just seem to happen to be allowing for really the only group or the only demographic that has been kind of universally discriminated against, right? In every culture, women have been discriminated against, and you know there has been a patriarchy, and it just so happens that the one thing that people are least willing to concede is that men can't just claim womanhood for themselves. They'll resist that when it comes to race or age or anything else, but not for um, yeah, not for women. I'm going to give you a sneak preview, screw it. Okay, here we go. This is every single thing I've got in my videos. To it's 40, 40 videos, okay. But yeah, suffice it to say, I'm not close to running out of content. <laughs> uh, uh. Progressives shouldn't be TERFs. TERFs is the acronym for trans-exclusionary radical feminists. Y your progressive card gets revoked. 
You know what would be funny? If like ContraPoints, I just saw someone mention ContraPoints. Like if ContraPoints like made a video like this, just like Contra just like at a car park, just like, let's talk about aesthetics. I love when people do serious political videos. I like when people do it, but they're driving. I always like that. Um, there used to be a, a turf channel that did that. And despisement of the trans community. And you're a progressive. And you, and you love democracy. And you're for women's rights and you're for... Uh, I think like, one of the reasons I find it funny is because my only experience with like just being sat in the car in like a car park is when is when like my mom would like have to run an errand or something. And she'd be like, oh, I've got to run an errand. Um, you know, you, you go sit in the car. Like mostly when I was a kid. I mean, I'm not going to pretend that like I haven't even as an adult, like sometimes, you know, my mom's given me a lift somewhere and then she's had to run an errand and I've been sat in the car. But like, definitely it is something which I mostly associate with being a kid. So when I like see somebody like, <laughs> like my, my head cannon right now, based on that being my only experience of when I've just been like sat in a car with nothing else to do. And I'm not being mean, I'm just having a little bit of a funny moment because I think it's kind of funny for me to imagine this. Like this guy's like mom has like gone out to like, like dri driven him somewhere and then like she's been like oh, i've just got to run an errand i just got to go into like you know the the shops to buy something and then he's been like he was like sat in the car and he was like bored and stuff and he was like playing with the radio but you know mum said he's not allowed to play with the radio because it drains the battery or something and then he's just like well i guess i'm going to make a video about turfs you could be shepherd shepherding them into what it means to be a woman and, and guide them. It oh, that's 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 cringy. Again, I don't know. Like, I feel like this guy. He he is kind of adorable because I don't know. Like in my, like I think it's just because I've decided he is waiting for his mom <laughs> to be done to be done with the groceries. Which is like I'm like such an asshole for saying that because I literally live with my parents, but. I don't know. It's it's, like, it's just a funny headcanon thing for me. Anyway, obviously just said that, like, if you're a woman, you can be, like, shepherding, like, trans-identified males into being women more properly, which is, like, that's such a funny thing to say. I feel like, I guess, like, three reasons. One, it's assuming that there even is, like, such a way in which somebody can be, like, a proper woman, um, which is obviously nonsense. Like, like no, like, that's so... Like, again, I mean, you know, I've said that before. I'm not going to, like, waste all that on, like, this kind of video I'm just doing for fun at the end of the things. But, like, obviously, like I said, it was, like, a proper way to be a woman is, like, really messed up. Um, two, the idea that the women who are critical of trans identity would be, like, would have an investment in wanting people to become, like, proper women. Like, like obviously, there are women who reinforce misogyny by like you know training training women to be you know we've all seen that opening scene in in Milan you'll bring honor on us all do, 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 do. you know you gotta learn to pour the tea Milan but, yeah and then the, the, the final other thing about this is it's kind of like just like the aspect of you know like the whole emotional labor thing like women have to do emotional labor for men um that feels like a, a good example of that like all like the nonsense women have to put up with from men you know, in a variety of ways, they on balance have to deal with more kind of of the crap of how uh, patriarchal expectations and the like can interfere with interpersonal relations. So you've got all of that going on. And then on top of that, the idea that any woman's like, do you know what I really want to do? It's just a very funny comment. Let's watch him say it again. Be inclusive to trans women. You could be shepherd shepherding them into what it means to be a woman. And, and guide them and, and you'll be a guide stone for them be doesn't that sound so appealing ladies doesn't that sound great the idea then is to change the legal definition of sex such that a gender recognition certificate a grc so, such that it accurately describes sex because you can't change sex like a legal definition of sex should really be in keeping with the actual definition of sex so the grc would no longer change a person's classified sex so someone who is assigned male at birth would still be technically male by legal loophole the point of this that's such a what no what do you mean still be technically male by legal loophole that's such a misrepresentation <laughs> what do you mean i mean obviously i could point out people aren't assigned male at birth people are observed to be male at birth but the other thing is they're not 
technically male by legal loophole, if the actual biological reality of their sex is still being described, they are male, and that is being described. The, the only sense in which they're technically male by legal loophole is if the Gender Recognition Act does talk about people's biological sex changing. So if you're like complaining about people being technically what they're not due to a legal loophole, well, then you're not going to like the Gender Recognition Act, are you? Cis women who can't deal with seeing, you know, gender non-conforming people in their spaces. Gender non-conformity has nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it because somebody can not be gender non-conforming at all and still be trans-identified. And alternatively, somebody can be massively gender non-conforming and not identify as trans. I'm a little white cis lady. I am just much less of a target than trans people talking about transphobia. And frankly, I am so sad seeing my trans friends so drained having to deal with this shit. All this is very cringe, right? A woman online saying, oh, I'm less of a target for abuse than biological males. That's a good point. She looks exactly like most non-binary people. Yeah, like I actually, I didn't realize that um, Emma Thorne was cis until just now so it's a bit weird to be like i'm cis i don't face any issues and it's like every other biological female talking about this issue looks the same as her whether they are trans identified or non-binary or not um but is gender ideology a modern bailey where sex and gender are purposely confused to further the narrative abs i think that is absolutely true yeah yeah i think there is a lot of and i think like the modern bailey is often kind of like an equivocation um, fallacy where you make one argument and then you make a different argument so you make one argument it's impossible to defend and it's so for example a good argument would be um trans identified males are females or aka trans women are females now that's a very difficult argument to defend that's the bailey but then you start arguing with them and instead they start talking about these complex uh differences of sexual development these complex and very rare differences of sexual development which they argue complicate um the category of female like they'll often use the the concreteness of the biological sex definition to argue that the categories of man and woman matter and have significance but then they will at their leisure resort to the kind of elasticity and meaninglessness of the gender you know kind of gender identity definition so they'll talk about being a woman and they'll talk about this as like this important thing that matters a lot. And it's like, well, the, you know, the fact they're talking about it as if it has some kind of definition means they must be talking about it being defined in some clear way, which is clearly the biological sex definition. If you're not familiar with the Pride Progress flag, uh, it was designed by an American artist, uh, Daniel Quasar. The Progress flag adds a chevron along the side, oh, the hoist. Don't, don't get into who designed the... Uh... It's interesting. She's not. She's not so quick to let us know who designed the uh, the trans flag. Uh, that features black, brown, light blue, pink, uh, and white stripes to bring certain communities to the forefront. Those being marginalized people of color, trans people, and those living with HIV and AIDS, and those who have been lost. Obviously, yes, they are removing the trans colors, but I don't think it's a coincidence that they're removing. All of the nonsense that doesn't need to be included in the gay pride flag because it's a gay pride flag for gay people right everyone's included the rainbow car like it's so here's the dumb thing right surely the thing with like the rainbow is it includes like every color it shows the the spectrum of light like how, what have we got to where even the rainbow flag isn't considered inclusive enough like the reality is the rainbow flag already does the job like i would be so offended if like somebody took the uk flag union the union flag in all its glory and was then like yeah we've added like um black and brown people onto it to um represent like the the black and brown people in the uk and i'd be like but the black and brown people in the uk are british the flag already represents them like that's that's what i don't get it's so obviously offensive it's so othering yeah v, v neo 42 absolutely like that's it why are you trying to make it seem as if these people aren't already and i'll go back to the rainbow flag why are you trying to make it seem as if gay people of color weren't already included in the flag 
It cuts out pan people and anybody identifying as queer who rejects to having a specific label for themselves, which is kind of where I fall these days. I tend to- Well, okay, yeah, because like, at that point, like, of course, cut out things that just don't mean anything, right? Like, if someone's just going to say, well, I'm not lesbian or gay or bisexual, but I have, like, some kind of vague queerness going on, blah, 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 blah. Anything said after the but doesn't matter. It's kind of like, well, I'm not lesbian or gay or bisexual. It's like, okay, well, let me stop you right there. We Then lesbian, gay, and bisexual activism has nothing to do with you. The gender criticals and neo-Nazis happen to agree on a lot of things. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, it's not a coincidence, Like, but that doesn't mean it's the same reason. It's kind of like, again, it's the same reason why right-wing populists agree with left-wing socialists on some points. And that's not a coincidence, but that doesn't mean that right-wing populists and left-wing socialists are the same. It doesn't mean that you need to abandon your commitment to left-wing socialism just because right-wing populists agree with you on some points. Okay, the, the mainstream progressive left is generally, nominally, anti-racist, anti-homophobic, all that kind of stuff. Um, but often in a way that's, you know, not necessarily very critical, right? A lot of times people aren't really thinking. So that person might be like, yeah, I'm really pro Black Lives Matter, but they, they don't really know what they're talking about. So nominally, they're, they're very anti-racist. Like, yeah, I'm very anti-racist, I'm pro Black Lives Matter, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, or maybe immigration, for example. They're like, I support immigration, you know, they don't really have any kind of sophisticated thoughts, they're just, I support immigration, I think anyone who's anti-immigration is bad. Okay, now, conversely, let's say that you're gender critical. Well, if you're gender critical, you're not somebody who just blindly, mindlessly accepts everything that the progressive left is saying. You don't just mindlessly, you know, you, you actually have necessarily thought about at least one issue, because if you just agree with everything that, like, the Green Party or the Liberal Democrats or the Democratic Party in America, um, if you just believed everything they're saying, you'd believe trans women are women. So then, if you're willing to be critical about the mainstream progressive left on the issue of trans identity, well, you're probably going to be critical about the progressive left on some other issues. You might suddenly be like, actually, you know, I have, I have some criticisms of Black Lives Matter. I think, you know, there are some things they're not doing so well. You've not become racist. You've maybe become a bit more critical, a bit more critical of just Un uncritically signing off on every single kind of anti-racist popular cause. So compared to the mainstream, uncritical, progressive left person who just accepts everything the mainstream progressive left says, you're now more racist. But is that because you've become racist? Is that because you now hate black people? No, it's because you've just become a little bit more intelligent in terms of what policies you're actually going to support. Posey Parker, yeah. incidentally, a self-proclaimed feminist uh, who has positioned her- <laughs> That's such a weird comment because she's famously not a self-proclaimed feminist. <laughs> oh dear. Basic facts, eh? Who needs them? There is no secrecy here. It's literally out in the open. Yeah, so just to clarify- Oh wait, are we going to get to see it? Okay, so I was going to explain- Okay, let's do it. Sorry. The big lie was first described by Adolf Hitler in Mein Kampf. She applied the section- Yes, so... ...where Hitler uses the idea okay. of the big lie uh, to turn people against the Jews to turn people against trans folks. Then followed a couple no, of weeks yeah. of... So the point is, Hitler, who is a bad person, believed in this idea of telling massive lies in order to convince people. And the people saying that biological males can be women are clearly telling a massive lie. When a biological male goes into a woman's space and says, it's okay, I'm a woman, they are telling a massive, gigantic lie. When people say that biological sex doesn't exist, they are telling a massive lie. When people say men can get pregnant, they are telling a massive lie. So she's saying, hey, where have we seen this strategy of telling massive lies to you know, perpetuate your ideology before? Say you own a bar and you are a free speech absolutist bar, you let everyone in regardless of their views, including Nazis. When you refuse to kick out those Nazis, you drive away normal people and become a Nazi bar. Like basically what you're saying is if you have a free speech absolute bar, you will end up only having people who believe in absolute free speech. If a bunch of Nazis show up at a, a you know ideological rally I agree with, that's not going to stop me showing support for the cause I agree with. 
right? You're when you're standing there fighting for women's rights, women's sex-based rights, if a bunch of Nazis show up and you just leave, then they're not even being aggressive, right? Like the Nazis aren't even being aggressive. They're just there. You're not you're not you're not an advocate for women's rights, really, are you? You're not like an activist. Like Oh yeah, I cared about fighting for women's rights. I really cared about going to that rally and showing my support for women's rights. But a bunch of Nazis showed up and just existed and were present there, so I left immediately. Like to be honest, in many ways it almost makes it seem like if you're a Nazi, I guess like you get a lot of like if you like your personal space, become a Nazi because then everyone just has to like basically at that point you got a restraining order against the world. Just want to say, can we please keep the chatter to a minimum? I'm one of the people who's very, very prone to sensory overload. There's a lot of whispering and chatter going on. It's making it very difficult for me to focus. Please, can we just, I know it's, we're all fresh and ready to go, but can we please just keep the chatter to a minimum? It's affecting my ability to focus. Thank you. Thank you, comrade. Okay, is there a speaker against name, point chapter, pronoun? Point of personal privilege. Point of personal privilege. Of personal privilege. privilege. Yes. Please do not use gendered language to, to address everyone. I would like to see like that's how that's how like the um the Bolshevik should have won the Russian Civil War. Like the Russians like go to shoot them and it's like, uh guys, um point of personal privilege, uh could you not shoot at me? Uh, I'm very prone to sensory overload and the fact that you uh keep being reactionary counter revolutionaries is really making it hard to establish a dictatorship of the proletariat. Um you know, I know we all uh, trying to be uh, vanguards of the revolution here guys. Uh, sorry, they's like, imagine Emma Thorne at Stalingrad. Okay, guys, um, the Nazis have shown up. Uh, we do need to make sure we leave. <laughs> what do those women, and subsequently, what do those gay people think is going to happen when that neo-Nazi movement starts getting the other things that they want? They're not going to get the other things that they want, because, again... The neo-Nazis, like the neo-Nazis aren't the way that the gender critical movement achieves success. Indeed, the neo-Nazis are holding back the gender critical movement and it, the gender critical movement would have more success if the neo-Nazis were gone. If they succeed at their eliminate trans people plan, do you think they're going to be like, fucking done? I think we might give up on the rest of it, actually. There were some quite helpful gays at that last uh, anti-trans rally. So. No, but the point is, again, you're acting as if the Nazis are like the leaders of the movement. You're acting as if the Nazis are even a particularly substantial contingent of the movement. And they're not. They're, they're, they're nothing. <laughs> like, like, yeah, basically what will happen is that the, okay, so gender criticals will rally. Rally, rally, rally. Nazis will show up. Who cares? Gender criticals keep fighting for women's rights and lesbian and gay rights and, you know, rights for, um, and bisexuals, of course, and rights for, um, uh, detransitioners and all that kind of stuff and you know we we achieve our goals okay and then what happens well all right maybe then the next week there's an anti-gay rally all right well none of the gender criticals will be there because of course if you are critical of gender then you kind of can't be homophobic because homophobia is part of gender so you can't be gender critical and homophobic so none of the gender criticals will be at the anti-gay rally oh but there might be some nazis at the anti-gay rally okay so uh, and then next week there's a anti-immigration rally. The Nazis are there, and what? They're like it's just there is no. It's like okay, so there are some Nazis who happen to agree with the gender critical movement. The gender critical movement achieves what they want, and then what? What what happens then? That's bad. If you believe this, you're you're kind of cucked, right? Because it's like okay, so you're a woman, and you're being told that you shouldn't advocate for your sex-based rights because some Nazis might later on try to take your rights away. If anything, like, what do you think about it? Isn't the logic of that really stupid, right? So, like, hey, guess what? Some people are going to try to take your rights away, so don't stand up for your rights. Like, that's basically the argument when you st distill it down. In the future, some Nazis might try to take your rights away, so don't stand up for your rights now against the TRAs who are trying to take your rights away. I would say, surely, the consistent thing would be, hey, no matter what, no matter who you're fighting against, no matter, you know, what stand you've got to take, always fight for your rights and take a stand for your rights. And that would that would seem to solve all the problems, right? TRA is trying to take away your sex-based rights? Fight for your rights. Nazis trying to take away your rights? Fight for your rights. Radical Muslims trying to take away your rights? 
fight for your rights. Oh, it's it's so convenient. And you know what? Maybe when you fight for your rights against the radical Muslims, a bunch of Nazis will show up there because, you know, they're, they're against immigration. A lot of, you know, Muslims are likely to be immigrants. So maybe you go to a, you know, there's there's a kind of large uh, radical Muslim or, you know, you know, maybe Orthodox Muslim um, immigrant community. And they're doing, you know, maybe they're advocating that girls shouldn't be allowed to go to school, of course. You know, I don't know if you heard of the Taliban. That is a thing. Um, so you you go to protest against that. And you know what? Actually, there's also some Nazis there. And Nazis are like, I don't like having these Muslims here. We need to get rid of them all, blah, blah, blah. Okay. <laughs> Again, it's irrelevant, right? You know, the, the chances that any, like, massive anxiety you have about the body you're in will be solved by changing that body just seems logically quite slim. Like, what are the odds that, oh, actually, this thing that I'm, you know, becoming incredibly depressed about is an actual problem with my body versus the, in my opinion, far more likely outcome that it's a problem with your mental state. And if you were to uh, look into, you know, things like mindfulness, things like regular exercise, a regular sleeping pattern, limiting access to screens, you know, the standard just like mental health stuff, I would anticipate, and you know, I could be, maybe you're doing all that stuff already. Maybe you're detoxing and getting out in nature and exercising regularly and you've got a good sleeping pattern and all that kind of stuff um, and you're well hydrated and everything that anyone could possibly say. Um, and I suppose, you know, at that point, maybe that's a different uh, discussion about like, well, you know, then one would ask, well, yeah, I mean, maybe you should still consider therapy. If something's wrong, you want to eliminate the things that could be the, like, for example, when you've got like a problem with your computer, you don't like immediately do a factory reset. The first thing you do is look for the possible solutions that won't cause immediate damage. And in the case of, you know, wanting to transition, the not only does transitioning um cause damage because you know there are side effects and of course if you regret it you won't be able to do anything about it but also if you go the other way and start doing things that are actually good for your mental health and don't require expensive surgery or you know all, all of like the and I mean dangerous surgery as well then that's actually better for your body you know exercise and regular sleeping pattern obviously I'm, I'm going to respond to the video but I just wanted to say uh, on the you know if you're, if you're, I mean, Indigo made the point that if you're here, maybe it's because you know that actually you, you, you shouldn't transition. And the fact you're here right now is, is, you know, a, a rational part of your brain telling you that the best thing to do is be happy with your mind and do things that are good for your mind rather than changing your body.